the key is that I've realized it's more about my path than it is about any one girl. How do I feel inside? You get enough validation. Look, you'll, you'll, you'll meet a great girl. You can be in a relationship. You can have a lot of sex. In the end, how do you feel after she leaves? I started off as a nice guy. I was nice guy one on one. I didn't know I was a nice guy though. I was actually a pretty high functioning nice guy. I had a lot of friends, people liked me, but it wasn't until I started doing this emotional work that I realized how much of a nice guy I was. So I grew up pretty well off, well off family. My parents divorced when I was about 10 or 11 years old. And at that point, my mother didn't take a lot of emotional responsibility for herself. She very much was dumped her feelings on me. If, there was, if she wasn't happy, it was something I wasn't doing. And when my parents divorced, I became, in a sense, the surrogate husband. If I wasn't doing something, if I wasn't doing something to make her happy, I was my father. So my father was the bad guy. And so she would even call me by his name. If I wasn't doing something right, she'd call me by his name. So what I felt, and this is something he talked about yesterday, was, well, I don't want to be like my father, right? So that's bad. Even though I love my father, I didn't want to be like that. I wanted to be good. Well, what ended up happening, ironically, is I became in a lot of ways just like my father because I ended up picking up behaviors that were manipulative. I felt... Coming home from school, I didn't know how she was going to be. Who do I have to be for her to be happy, right? Even if she was happy, how long is it going to last? Because I knew it wasn't going to last. So growing up in that environment, there's a lot of love in the family too, but I can see how this created this, this paradigm in me where I was constantly seeking approval, constantly wanting to be good. And I would create covert contracts with people, form of control, all this stuff. And I worked through this stuff, not from realizing it intellectually. This all came from realizations that happened with me from working through my emotions. So the f first book I actually read before I read No More Mr. Nice Guy was Letting Go by David Hawkins. How many, how many of you guys know Letting Go by David Hawkins? Yeah, it's a pretty badass book. <coughs> and I started working with releasing first, welcoming emotions. At the time, when I came through the, the door at Fearless, the first experience I took, I was like, all right, that's, that's pretty cool. But I went on, I used attention skills, I met a girl that triggered a lot of the nice guy stuff in me. And I got my heart broken. Because I was giving to take, I wanted to sleep with her, so I, you know, all this different stuff. And I got my heart broken. So I came back and I said, I want to work on this stuff. Brian recommended letting go. From there, I got consistent. After reading number Mr. Nice Guy, I got consistent. And what happened was, what really changed a lot of this stuff for me, and stuff still comes up. Stuff I was working on this morning was coming up. But what really broke a lot of this for me was getting consistent with the work. And one emotional release, which brought up abandonment. You guys know what abandonment? Emotional abandonment, right? You can actually feel abandonment from people in your life that have been there all the time, because you can feel emotionally abandoned by them. I had abandonment issues, I had no idea. Like if you would have told me <laughs> five years ago, do you have abandonment issues? Like, no, what are you talking about? But I did. I had a lot of stuff, I had grief I had stored down, abandonment with my father I didn't know was there. So he wasn't around when I was very young, wasn't around that much. My brothers cried, I didn't cry at all. I never cried once. But in a workshop one day, it just all came flooding out. And it hit me, pictures, images, memories, boom, 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 boom. From there, it, it changed. I no longer felt like I needed to give to take or do any of this or lie or make, make up stories, make myself feel better about myself, this, all this stuff. Because it wasn't even like it was right or wrong or nothing like that. It was just a waste of energy. <laughs> That's what it felt like. It's like, why would I do that? So when you're doing this kind of work, what you, the, the notes are great, right? Intellectual stuff, it's great. Doesn't mean as much as 
processing what's inside your body, what's stored in your body, the feelings. I haven't actually read that many books. <laughs> yeah, really? Don't brag about that. Yeah, I don't mind. Like letting go, like letting go, I haven't even finished the book. I read from apathy to pride a bunch of times, but I took on the practice. So from there, what I started doing was I started going out. I got consistent with the workshops, I started going out. I didn't come here to meet chicks. I love girls. But I didn't come here to meet girls. I came here to, to work through a broken heart. And in the process, by working through the emotions, I ended up meeting a lot of girls. And so as I got consistent, what I did was I would go out and I would take the outside world was a reflection of how I was feeling on the inside. I would go to bars. I would step into tension, I would do approaches. And I was taking workshop after workshop. And Brian's first releasing workshop was a really big one for me because even though I was releasing from letting go, I learned a lot of stuff in that workshop, which is pretty cool. I was like, damn, that's some cool shit. I went home and I played with it. What ended up happening was I started surrendering parts of my ego, parts of my nice guy, and the releasing was key for me letting go of the nice guy. Why was it key? How could releasing be key for me letting go of the nice guy? Because the nice guy, the hardest thing for the nice guy is being honest. The nice guy wants to be perfect. The nice guy wants to be, wants to be good. In fact, sharing parts about ourselves that are imperfect or that we, that we ourselves are, ju are judging, we feel if that is revealed, somebody else will leave us or that we'll be some, some like the, the abandonment stuff, right? It's that, it's that feeling that comes up. So as I started releasing, the key to releasing and letting go of your shit is really getting honest with yourself. If you can't be honest with yourself, you're not going to be honest with other people. So because I was making a practice of really being honest with myself in these releases, can I let this go? And I'm saying no, <laughs> when I, saying no, being really honest, no, I can't. It's fuck no. <laughs> I don't want to let it go. What ended up happening was I would go out and meet girls and because I was so honest with myself, I would get brutally honest with them. If she was sharing something and I, I was like, whatever, I was like, I really don't care about that. And she's like, what? And, and, and then, but it'd be fine. Like I'd be feeling more of myself while relating to her. And in that I was actually connecting a lot better with people because I was being more of me. So that had a big impact. So when you're doing this work, always put, how are you feeling at the forefront? And from there, then everything Brian was doing here, walking up you know, with your heart, walking up with your stomach, walking up with your balls, that stuff will integrate because you're letting go of shit. So we, do, we go over this in the releasing workshop. I'm sure you guys have seen this. But I want to kind of touch on this real quick. How many of you guys have seen this? Raise your hand if you've seen this. All right, cool. I know a lot of you guys have. Some of you guys have been in our advanced workshops and stuff. Um, so this is basics of releasing. How do you feel in your body? I don't know if you guys can't see this. I want to ask yourselves, ask yourselves this. I'll talk about girls because how, how many of you in here are you're here for, to meet women to improve your dating life? Raise your hand. Cool, cool. This, this, I mean, this is for anything. It doesn't matter what it is. In the end, it's not about women. It, it doesn't matter, right? They, we, we like women, but it's beyond that. How do we feel about ourselves? That's the goal. So, but we'll use women as, you know, since most of you guys are here for that. When you think about women, like right now, just, just like put your notes down, feel your body, right? You think about, imagine, just feel, feel your chest, feel your stomach, feel just an image of a girl you're attracted to, and feel your chest. Notice where it gets tight. Where on this list is your relationship to that? There's apathy, there's grief, there's sadness, fear, lust, anger, pride, courage, acceptance, peace. If you feel fear, raise your hand. Cool. 
If you feel uh, lust, raise your hand. <laughs> you look like you have fun with lust. <laughs> but this is, this is a great indication of where, you're, of where you're at, right? Now, I want you to try this. This is something we've done in the experience workshop. Close your eyes. <coughs> now, who would you be? How would you be if you had no resistance to women? No resistance to feminine energy. Feel your chest, your stomach, feel your balls. What if you were not afraid of girls? not afraid of the reaction. So like, you're, on, you're on Lincoln Road and you're walking on Lincoln Road. You're not afraid of their emotions. You're not afraid of their reactions. You're not afraid of offending. How curious would you be? How free would you be? How would you talk to them? How would your eye contact be? Who would you be? Who is this guy? How would you touch them? How bold would you be? If you were not afraid of making her upset, not afraid of offending, just real. Notice if there's fear of that, fear of who this guy is, what could happen? Now open your eyes, come back in the room slowly. How many of you guys, how many of that felt good? Nice. How many of you guys felt fear of being that? Yeah, gotta be honest with that because that's, that's where you wanna be, right? Being fearless is not about getting rid of fear. Being fearless is about being turned on by fear. I remember when I started getting, you know, more advanced in approaching and all this stuff. And I was just, it didn't mean like it wasn't that big of a deal. I wasn't approaching as much because I wasn't as afraid as I used to be. So is it really the women that we're afraid of? Is it really the women, I mean, we love girls. Is it really the women we want though? Or is it more about the relationship to fear that drives the masculine? Because when I stopped feeling as much fear, I didn't want to approach as much. I'd see her, she's like, she's beautiful, but I'd be like, yeah, yeah whatever. There's a dating coach that talks about uh, his love letter to approach anxiety. And he talks about how much he envies his students for their approach anxiety because he wishes he had it again. <laughs> and what do you see on every fucking dating, like every mailing list, like you're on as far as like a dating coach, how to get rid of your approach anxiety in 10 easy steps and all this shit. But that's the best feeling. So what if it's really about changing your relationship with fear? What if releasing and facing your emotions to get more integrated is what changes your relationship. Because if you can change your relationship to your internal state, how you feel about yourself, everything in the outside world will change. You know, there's a, uh, I heard this quote once, it's pretty good, that with a girl, you know, people always say, oh, you gotta break the ice with her, right? You know, go break the ice with her. It's like, no, it's, not a, it's about breaking the ice within yourself. Going out is about breaking the ice within yourself. Stepping through those feelings. So one key, really, and if you look at these feelings up here, right? Apathy, grief, and fear. These are what? Inward emotions, right? You guys see that? You guys notice how these feelings are inward? Fear, sadness, apathy. Lust, anger, pride, outward. Courage, acceptance, peace. These are more being, just alignment. Courage is a little push on it, but not much. These are more just alignment. 
so much of it, we, this is all encompassing. We have this regarding our emotions. Nice, guy have, nice guys have a shit ton of fear regarding what? Lust, anger, and pride. <clears throat> Judging those feelings. Every nice guy wants to get to courage, acceptance, and peace. But they want to do this. They want to skip the lust, anger, and pride. Why? So we've got, we've got guilt, we've got shame, we've got fear in relationship to anger. Fear of our own power. Women don't, have, there's more women today have a better relationship to their anger than men do. One of the reasons for that is also because men have more of a fear of coming off as a threat with their anger. Women don't have to worry about that as much. And also growing up in a household, if your father was very angry, you have this negative relationship to anger. All this stuff affects how we feel about ourselves walking through a bar, walking through the world, relating to friends, relating to people, going for what we want, all this. For me, what really helped a lot with fear, especially in relationship to meeting girls, was turn on. And Brian talked about it. Sexual energy. Feeling your nuts, feeling your balls while you're talking to a girl. It's not about what you say, right? And now a lot of people expect me to say, oh, it's, not, it's about how you say it. No. If you're feeling your turn on and you're interacting with a girl and you're enjoying her and you're enjoying her from here and you're enjoying her from here, there's actually a conversation that's happening underneath the conversation. And that's where the energy is. But so many of us as men, we have this, this shame about sex, this, this fear of sex. Sex is wrong. I was raised in a very strict Christian household. I went to a very strict private Christian school, Baptist school. I don't, you guys are probably surprised to hear that shit. <laughs> but I, I did. And, uh, you know, like if you don't have, you have to have sex after marriage and all this stuff. And there's a lot of love in the school I went to, but a lot of judgment too. And I had a lot of sexual shame. A lot of sexual shame. So it's interesting how that, that affects how you relate not, to not just the women, but to the world, to how you express. I mean, the purpose of the species is to what? To reproduce, right? The very creation of life and there's pleasure in it. We're like, that's, oh, it's fucked. I, mean, I can't watch that. Like we'll, we'll have shit, we'll, we'll have stuff on a movie theater, like Saw, people getting their arms ripped off, screaming bloody murder, right? Blood everywhere, but uh, if there's a penis and a vagina, you can't see that. And that's what creates life. And it feels good, but no. So when you walk up in your dating life, when you're meeting a girl, what is the primal? Yes, you wanna to get to know her, all this stuff, but underneath it all, when you do an approach, what is the primal message as, in a sense, animals, right, that we are, what is the primal message that's underneath the surface? What is it? Yeah. Clap the cheeks. You say clap the cheese? <laughs> clap the cheeks. Yeah. But the, yeah, I want to fuck you, or I'm interested in potentially fucking you. If there's any judgment, shame, resistance to her even knowing that, that, that's, that that intention could be there in your body, how is that going to affect the interaction? Yeah. You don't, even, you don't have to talk about sex, but just the way you say hi to her, right? The way you look at her when she's talking that's going to have an effect. She's going to know, okay, you know, uh, Mark yesterday was talking about I can't be trifled with, right? That's there. And when you have that energy going and you're right there, it's, it's a lot of guys she could ignore, a lot of guys she could like maybe blow off, but okay, she knows like this guy, even if I like, I'm not interested, I have to do it a different way with him. Because there's that lower energy, right? There's that penetrating like, you know, okay, this is a guy, this is a man coming up to me. So that's, that's most of it. 
I mean, I, I'll tell you this, like we've coached in the, the week longs, we've coached in the advanced week longs, we've been at the bars with the guys and that's the one area that, it just drives me personally crazy because like, I see the girls liking him and the guy just, just won't touch her. It's like, just touch her. <laughs> <laughs> it's her knowing, her knowing that he likes her is like scary. And I told the guy once, I was like, I told him, I was like, okay, your consequence is going to be if you can't do this, if you're not going to do this, because he was ready for it, he just wasn't doing it. <laughs> you have to walk up to every girl in the bar and go, I'm, I'm learning how to touch girls. <laughs> and he, didn't, he did not want to do that. And sure enough, he showed up. During the model work, he got a big release in his anger. He owned his anger, right? We started working on that at night. We knew what was going to happen. He got, he got the first makeout he's ever gotten with a girl in a bar off of an approach that night when that happened. And then his, <laughs> and then what did he say? He said, and then the next morning we were like cheering him on and, and he was like kind of sad. And we we're like, hey, what's going on? He's like, just like, it was just kind of, it's a lot easier than I thought it would, thought it would be. We're like, we're like, yeah. He's like, I just let so much good pussy get away. <laughs> it was just like, all right, well, you know. And that's, that's the key to this stuff is that you'll realize that you don't have to learn anything. So much of, so much of this growth is not about learning. It's actually about undoing, letting go of inner blocks, stopping, letting go of resistance. I remember when I first started working through this stuff for myself, and I'm working through it every day, right? It happens. I got rejected yesterday. The key is that I've realized it's more about my path than it is about any one girl. How do I feel inside? You get enough validation. Look, you'll, you'll, you'll meet a great girl. You can be in a relationship. You can have a lot of sex. In the end, how do you feel after she leaves? But as I was, I'll, bet, I'll backtrack. When I was working through this stuff, as I was opening all this energy up, <coughs> as I was working through my feelings, what I remember telling Brian this on a webinar, is it's strange. Like As I'm doing this, I would go out. I would get into interactions, I would feel how my ego would feel, I would get all stirred up, I would go home, welcome it, release, let it go, work through all this stuff. As I started opening in that opening in all of this, it was surprising because one thing that I felt was, wait, this was always me. This, this was always there, I just never unveiled it. Like, it's strange. It's almost hard to describe unless like, you've been through it, but that's what I felt like. Like, I always had this, but I never did it. And that was a big realization where I was like, this is what this, is what this work is about. Uh, there's a quote we use in the, in the experience workshop or in relationship to fear or, or going through all this where Michelangelo was asked, this is my favorite quote when it comes to relating it to self-development. They asked him, you know, how, so how did you sculpt David? What was the process that got you to sculpt David? And he said, I didn't sculpt David. David was already in the statue. I just had to chip away all the pieces that weren't David. And that's, and that's what this is. I have a question um, in regards to uh, the feeling, right? So yeah. the feeling of lust and the feeling of being turned on. And being able, like, from your experience, you're really good. I've seen you develop as I've grown with you guys as well. And uh, you getting your turn on very, very fast, really quickly. So I guess my question was like, how do you go about that? How do you know it's not like lust or? Yeah, well, you gotta be okay with lust, right? Lust is a beautiful thing, you know? You, have, you feel some great lust during sex, but it's, um, you know, if it's lust, it's fine. It, it, it's, it's not so much about feeling this or not feeling that. You shouldn't feel this. You know what? Instead of lust, you should be feeling courage, right? No. It's about how, how is your relationship to lust? How is your relationship to anger? How is your relationship to pride? So there are guys out there, guys that are really good 
they're very successful, they have a very light relationship with lust. They enjoy lust. They, actually, they enjoy their wanting. But many of us, we have pain in relationship to wanting, right? So it's about shifting your relationship to the emotion, not so much shifting the, not changing the emotion itself. There are guys out there that get turned on by pride. There are nice guys out there that have pride, and when it comes up, they, they judge it. They see it as right or wrong, good or bad. Judgment will lock all this shit in place. All these emotions will get locked in place with judgment or guilt. It's like the same thing. But one thing that really helped me a lot was uh, doing the pelvic rock. Yeah. Like that's the embodiment movement. I would play music, I would do that. I'd feel emotions come up and I'd work through that. Um, you know, a lot of times too, it would, it would be that and then going out. You gotta do shit that scares you. You gotta, you want, you, I, what really helped me too with breaking a lot of this stuff and it's, there's still certain stuff I'm working through, but like if I felt like something was gonna bring up guilt, for me, I would purposely just do that. Just to build a relationship with the feeling. Just to see, just to kind of, kind of face that fear and deal with what, with what happens on the other side of it. And most of the time it'd just be fine. Right? It's like you're... Explain the feeling of turn on? Turn on? Explain, it's like a warmth here. And it just plays into, I can feel it, feel it in my legs. Right? Turn on is part of grounding. If you, if you, you, can, you can feel your legs and be grounded in front of a girl to a certain degree, but if you're not comfortable with your turn on, you won't be, that, you won't be as grounded as you could be. Why? Because that's the natural polarity to her. So if there's some block here, it's, you're, it's, you're not going to be as grounded. So turn on, your balls weigh you down. That, that's part of it. So guys that want to work on their grounding, they, they should be working on, especially in relationship to girls, they got to be working on their turn on. But it's, you can feel it from here, you know? And, um, and it's not only with sex. Turn on can be for, for right, right now for me with music. Like I know like when I... Like my dick got numb for a bit with sex, where I was just like, uh, like, cause I was having a lot of it and, and I had some emotions I was still like, still working through. But how, how do I feel about myself outside of girls? And so my dick was getting like a bit numb when I came to thinking about sex. I would, have, the girl in my bed, I'd be like, no, I don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't want to have sex. Yeah. But then I would think about my music. I'd be like, whew. Would you just get hard? I would just feel this heat, like I could feel this like gotcha. twinkle so in my eye. That would happen to me where I was just like, just in it just constantly. Yeah. yeah. You think of guys that, I mean, Brian talks about Arnold Schwarzenegger, all, you know, when he says I'm coming all the time, I'm coming when I'm curling, I'm coming when I'm ca crossing the street, right? Mm -hmm. guys, that, guys that have a lot in life get turned on and they also get turned on by the challenge, which is why turn on is, turn on is huge to, to building a relationship with fear. That is the big key to building a relationship with fear is turn on. You got to feel your turn on in relationship to the fear. And that's what, that, that access is the courage. That's the penetrating energy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punch through this. How do you gauge that? How do you gauge if you're pushing <coughs> through, you, you feel it. You know, it's there. Right? Um, Sometimes you have to feel it because... Because the only way I can know, like I've, cause that's, the, that's where the feeling part is important. Because if you're walled off, if you're emotionally walled off, you're not going to feel it. And, that, and somebody that's emotionally walled off isn't actually really feeling their turn on. Like they're feeling a part of it, but they're not really feeling it. Because turn on, real turn on is a form of vulnerability, right? If you find yourself ever talking sexual, like really talking sexual and feeling it, you notice your voice gets softer. There is a vulnerability in it. But it, um, you have to be able to feel the girl and where she's at. That's why we've focus so much on connection and the heart, stomach, and all that stuff. Yeah. So when you were changing your relationship to fear, you obviously used to turn on to, to process that. So I didn't consciously do that. So I, I, I'm looking back, I realized that's what happened. But. So if you didn't consciously do it, but now you know that that's what you did, is, are we just sitting there going like, well, I'm fearful, but can I 1% be turned on by this? Yeah, absolutely. Like, that's basically what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So you're just in there like, fuck that place. It's fucking gorgeous. Yeah. You're, you're turned on by the fact that she's gorgeous, but then you're also 
<laughs> yeah, and you're building a relationship with fear. Yeah, it's, it's, that's what that right there is building a relationship with fear. Yeah, so like last night there was there was a very gorgeous woman. You were you were there for that, mm -hmm. and we were pretty much just eyeing each other like the whole freaking night. He held the tension very well. And then like she'd be dancing with the guy, and I'm like, come on. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was really nice. I was just like, go for it. Yeah, Good. It's crazy. It's a great feeling. You mentioned about releasing. Was that, was that the big turning point for you? Yeah. The release. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's really what it all comes down to. You know? I mean, you can get validated all you want. doesn't matter. If you constantly want validation, you're never going to feel satisfied. Um, you know, as a dating coach I went out with in Vegas, and uh, he, uh, you know, he would have a lot of success with girls. And... But we'd talk and he'd tell me, he's like, Matthew, he's like, after these girls leave, I'm, I'm actually like miserable. Like I'm depressed and he, he would use like manipulative stuff, right? He'd use a lot of pickup stuff and he would just, just had all this sadness and grief inside. And that's why, I mean, that's why it's not about getting this or getting that. It's really about what's happening inside. And all this stuff gets stored in here. You know, if you, have, if you have stuff from childhood, you're trying to prove something to your mom and prove something to your dad, it doesn't matter how many times you get this validation or that validation. If you've got something you've held inside and you haven't faced it, it's going to play out in your life. It's law of vibration. Emotions are a vibration. Law of vibration is law of attraction. You're going to keep pulling certain situations into your life until you deal with what you haven't been able to face or what you've been afraid to face. That's one of the thing, reasons why, I, one second, that's one of the reasons why I, I love the work that we do so much because it's the real shit. We go for that. It's not about staying like this or doing this or, you know, it's, it's, that stuff doesn't matter. When this changes, everything else changes. Body language is driven by emotion. Sub it's all this stuff. So um, I assume like letting go is beyond grounding. It's like a, another process that you're going through. Yeah, oh, letting go is part of grounding. Right? The more comfortable you can get with facing your emotions, the more, that's the, that's the Josh said this once, I completely agree with him. That's the key, that's confidence. Being comfortable with facing all of your feelings is confidence. So that's gonna help you get more grounded. So the more you can welcome, the more you can welcome, whether it's fear, anger inside, whatever it is, the more grounded you'll be. Because the fear of life is the fear of really, is the fear of emotions, like David Hawkins says. There's no fear of that girl. There's only fear of the emotions she may make me feel, or the situation, uh, will, or what will come up from it, right? Mm -hmm. I guess I was kind of curious, like, for yourself personally. Oh, yeah, yeah, that helped a lot too. It, it all played a part. <laughs>